Well, this place has been here since the 1880s, mainly as a rowing boat hire, and built up throughout the, the 20th century to, to a fairly large storage and mooring facility with cruises, rowing boats. It was started by my great-grandfather back in the 1880s, uh, and his father before him was lived on Inchfad Island, which is next door to here. Uh, so the family connection goes back a long way. Falm has quite a, a long established tourist destination, going back to Victorian times and beyond, obviously, with the steamer service to the place. Uh, when I grew up here, and it's obviously, it's, it's a busier place probably than it was in the 70s, you know, when I was young. But, uh, I mean, it, it still retains a bit, of, a bit of a nice village atmosphere. Well, I've been here since I left school in 1981, probably been the last 15 years or so I've been running it full time. Well, my stepfather, uh, he, he works with us, he's our main driver, and in fact does the mailboat mostly and cruises and ferrying. Uh, and my cousin Chris from Drummond, he's worked here since almost since he left school and that's about 16 or 17 years he's worked here full time. So there's still quite a strong family connection in the business to this day. Four or five coming back. Hi, Maisie, you're in charge. There's four of you, is it? Oh, it's 20 quid. We just go through the gate down to the boat called Margaret, okay? Well, the mail boat's basically certainly in the summertime where we can carry passengers on it. Um, it's a two and a half hour journey amongst the islands in the loch culminating in a stop at Inchmourne Island for an hour or so. Um, and we deliver to sort of three or four islands depending on what mail there is. You literally see Scotland and it's changing seasons in Loch Lomond, probably more so than almost anywhere throughout a year. It's certainly a nice sunny day like, like it is today, obviously it's, it's a lovely place to go out, but it's a nice frosty day in the middle of winter when there's not a soul around uh, and the, the clarity of light's good, it's also wonderful. Well, it's nice, he brings people in, and he, quite a few of them have lunch. It's very vital. It's nice to get the meal delivered twice a week, as long as he doesn't bring too many bills. <laughs> They're quite grateful that the service was established, um, which was 65 years ago, I may say. I suppose as long as there's a reasonable number of people in the islands, uh, it's going to continue. It just is somewhere you live a lot of the time, um, especially when you work and live here. It, it probably 
takes away some of the, the beauty of the place that other folks see that maybe locals don't. Um, which is a shame, but you know, occasionally if you've got a couple of days off or you get a day off and you can maybe go out in the loch on a nice day like this, um, you kind of forget about that and you realise it's just a fantastic place to live. My favourite job throughout the year is when you start to get into the summer uh, and it's not freezing cold in an old shed repairing boats uh, and then you start doing a bit of ferrying and a bit of the mail boat trip um, and I think that, that's probably my favourite job of the year. Maybe it doesn't last like all year but for, for some of the time it's a good thing to be starting again in the spring. I would say my favourite place in the National Park is probably on my own doorstep and that's Inch Calwick Island. I rarely go there in this day and age, but I was there on Boxing Day um, and it was wonderful. Uh, it's just a fantastic island to visit. Lynch Cali has a nature trail on it, beautiful sea scenery off the top of the hills, beach at the other end, fabulous paths and trails. So it's just a wonderful place to go. And my oldest ancestors buried there, or known ancestor, <laughs> in the burial ground. So that is a fairly special place to me. My ancestor was buried there is Duncan McFarlane who lived on Inch Fad Island in the 1700s and ran the government run distillery on the place, which is a little known fact. I've got one son only who's my youngest child who's only nine as we speak. So there's a long a long time away before he, you know somebody else is gonna come along that's gonna have been an obvious choice to run the place. It's good and it's it's one of the reasons I, I struggle by and re remain in this job because it's, the family connection is quite strong.